bitte. Ich muss Hallo sagen. Uh, so, now officially, hello everybody. Um, I want to uh, give some comments on a discussion we had in the Discord channel. Um, there is this uh, pattern of uh, post redirect get or uh, redirect after post, um, which says that in a, in a web application you should never show anything direct in a direct response to a post request. Um, so whenever you post or put or delete or whatever, so any method that really changes things, you generally uh, are supposed not to show anything, but to um, to do what you have to do, have to and then to redirect to a um, uh, to a get route. Um, will you please disable that. <laughs> um, This is true for almost all cases. The only uh, exception of that rule is um, when you when you open a new form and enter invalid data, you will post to the uh, you, you will go to the to the post route, um, and if the data cannot be saved, um, the form of the new action is rendered again. Um, so if you Uh, press reload then, uh, you will resend the form request and will resend the, the data and especially um, you are on a route that is not, um, uh, if, if you really just go back to the, to the, to the um, address bar and press enter, you will not see the same thing again. This is a little bit awkward, um, but uh, the, the, you have uh, a couple of, of, of decisions to take. So. Um, You could, of course, do a redirect and save your data somewhere, but this is pretty cumbersome. Um, and especially, you'd have to either save it to the database at some in some prelim preliminary state or so. This is uh, this problem can be solved. You could save, solve it by saving the data in the session or by saving the data um, in this flash thing. Um, this can be done, but I really don't don't, uh, don't promote that. So I think. Um, the invalid uh, data uh, situation is a reasonable exception from the uh, post redirect get rule. Um, I, I'd suggest to just stick to it. Unless you are in a situation where you definitely shouldn't, then I'd, I'd probably suggest using JavaScript uh, to really submit the form in the background. So change the state of the form, submit the data in the background to the proper f post uh, route get some JSON response and then to decide whether to show um, the, um, the, uh, the, 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 the errors or the, the changed form or whatever, um, or to redirect in JavaScript then. So yeah, this is probably the, the, the neatest way to, to solve this problem if you really consider it one. And in general, uh, I really think the, um, the trouble of uh, Uh, being able to, re to press reload on these um, invalid form things is, yeah, you can live with it pretty well. Yeah, this is something I wanted to say about the, um, about the Discord discussion we had there. Um, although if you disagree, you may uh, tell me that. I will then get angry. Um, all right, so today we want to um, introduce some new some more concepts um, so that you will be able to produce your own uh, application for the uh, third assignment uh, afterwards. Um, so yeah, lovely. Um, I am now exactly where we left uh, last week. So the application is running. We got our uh, stupid calculation model. Um, and if we go to the to the start page of the of the application, we still get this, yay, you're on Rails. We should probably first get rid of that because that's, yeah, just not helpful at all. Um, so this is the repository. Is this big enough for you to see? Today I won't try the split screen thing. I, I'll probably just switch contexts, it's probably better. Um, yeah, so we are currently on the route slash, so which is nothing. Um, and we'll uh, want to do something reasonable there. So we just go to the routes, the routes file. And uh, the easiest way to, to, to deal with it um, is to say root to redirect 
calculations. This would then mean that when we reload here, we get, hopefully, <laughs> get a redirect to the calculations page. Um, so we could, of course, just add some, yeah, proper link this to a controller or a controller action pair. Um, but in this case, I think the calculations are the most important thing we're dealing with. And so this is just reasonable to go through the calculations. Um, all right. One thing you probably already uh, considered uh, great about the app is the, the design. So we should just have a look about, at how we can, can add uh, some CSS information in a proper way. We, I think we added this um, st stupid uh, green box just uh, in line. Um, but this is not the way things should be done. Um, I guess this was calculations index. Uh, no, oh, where is it? Uh, application. application layout. Ah, yeah. So we, we explicitly added this style here and we should probably just remove it at this point um, and say this is the div uh, which has the name ID equals uh, main content or whatever. Um, and we change some small things. This style sheet link tag we won't use, but we'll stick to the JavaScript pack tag stuff because this is the more modern way to handle things in Rails. Um, and uh, currently there is this app JavaScript directory, which is named pretty stupid. So we'll rename this um, to um, front-end because it will contain JavaScript and CSS information. <clears throat> and um, then we have, because we're using this Webpacker gem using, that uses Webpack, the JavaScript Webpack thing uh, underneath, uh, we have to change the Webpacker um, configuration. And this configuration really just tells Webpacker where to find its sources. And we'll change this from app JavaScript to app frontend. Apart from that, everything is fine here. Um, and we'll add an application as CSS. Um, where we put, uh, how did I call it? Main content? Do you know? Um, I think so. Main underscore content, yeah. Main content. Outline. One pixel. Solid red. Um, now, if we have a look at the, the console, we already see that there are things going on here, but we changed some basic configuration. So in this case, we really, we really, we really have to, to stop and restart the server because otherwise it won't realize the paths have changed because that is just, these files are generally loaded at, at boot time. So reloading just doesn't help there. Um, okay, so now let's reload and we'll see this Webpacker compiling, which means it uh, takes all the packs it can find and produces the corresponding CSS and JavaScript files, and now we got this neat red box, which is much more beautiful than the green one was. Um, all right, so at least it works, uh, and we could add our content here. Pro uh, do you know SCSS or is uh, is so SCSS is, a, is an extension of CSS, which is uh, has the, the huge advantage of being hierarchical. So you can say th something like um, H1, uh, so well, it really doesn't matter. Um, and this automatically wraps this uh, the, the inner statement in the outer one, so it will only apply to H1s that are inside the, the main content. So this makes writing CSS much neater because you don't have these stupid change of uh, of um, selectors in front, but you can really just specify it by, by wrapping things uh, in a hierarchical and yeah, reasonable way. It really feels very much like um, this is how SCSS should have been from the very beginning. So yeah, hopefully reloading just helps. 
Yeah, so it does. All right, so of course, we could just add our, um, uh, our CSS code here and even include others and stuff. But um, the way, well, most people make their web applications today, and probably the standard way of doing things is using Bootstrap. Um, so get Bootstrap. Uh, it's probably familiar for most of you. This is the, the framework, the view framework that is generally yeah, the basis of almost everything today. So um, I stick to this. There are others like SERP Foundation or so, but um, yeah, I think Bootstrap is just fine. And we'll uh, use version 5. Oh, so yeah, this is because the... Uh, yeah. Ah, yeah. yeah, currently version 5, beta 3, but this is stable already and I suggest using this uh, Bootstrap 5 version. And this is the, um, it, it's pretty well documented. Um, there are a lot of um, visual elements like forms and pop-ups and tabs and whatever. Um, so I totally, yeah, suggest using, using this. And now we want to in integrate it. So one way of doing this would just to download this thing and to drop it somewhere in the application and somehow load the stuff. But this is not the way things should be done today. But um, we are using uh, the pretty much standard JavaScript tools. So we can just use yarn, yarn add bootstrap. And then bootstrap is being installed, but sadly, we see it is bootstrap uh, 4.6. We want bootstrap 5. Um, so we have to go to the package JSON, which was changed, and either uh, write the current version here, or what I prefer is yarn at bootstrap at version 5. It will then tell us it can't find 5, it is 5 beta 3. All right. So it's just. Add it to the repository, and um, uh, so the, the the version, the Bootstrap five, is being downloaded and uh, added to the to the package JSON, so it so it is available within the uh, application code. All right. So what we then want to do is we want to import. Um, I always mix it up. I guess it's Bootstrap. SCSS bootstrap. You know, well, let's see whether it's correct. I have to look it up every time normally. So let's just, oh, and restart the server, obviously. All right, so file to import not found or unreadable. So it's, this is not the way. Um, I don't know whether you're familiar with it, so I'll just probably show you. We could just enter the um, package JSON. This is the, uh, not the package, the node modules. This is the place where all the downloaded JavaScript stuff is uh, put. And we see this is, there's a lot of shit. Um, and yeah, obviously Bootstrap is quite at the beginning. Ba, 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 ba. I... Ba, 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 bootstrap. All right. So, bootstrap. SCSS. And, ah, bootstrap SCSS, just. Yeah, without the ad. I'll never get that right. Okay, uh, and again, go back to the root directory and restart the server. I'm intentionally using the same terminal for everything because the font is so huge you can easy, can't easily uh, see different terminals at one time anyway. Oh yeah, so what we see that is is that we really found a, uh, yeah, the, the, the design changed. So obviously it looks like some CSS stuff has been loaded. But this, of course, is not a proper 
bootstrap layout so far. So let's have a look. There is this example session uh, section. So download examples. We can, but we do not download anything. We'll just custom components album. We'll just look for a simple example. Um, there themes. Oh no, this is not. This is the the, the themes you could buy. So with this simple thing. Yeah, we could just take this one. This is, uh, we have a menu here. Yeah, probably this is neat. And we, we don't want the, the inner stuff, but we just need the outer container. So, mm, having such a small monitor is really annoying. Okay, so we have the body and we just copy everything inside the body. Um, and we could now go to, the, to our layout file and here we want to introduce all this stuff. But um, when we paste it here, it will be HTML and it would be well, quite, quite annoying to change everything. So I want to, to, to use Slim and therefore this, this, this needs a page uh, HTML to Slim. HTML to Slim where you can just paste some blob of uh, HTML and you get slim, which is quite neat. All right, and we have to, of course, change this to slim. Okay, uh, HTML. Head, title, meta is fine. And this JavaScript pack tag. And this is almost it because we want to, to we want to replace the body anyway. So just move it down. Um, and we enter enter all the body stuff here. Then we get some navbar stuff, which is all this header stuff that we'll just keep it as it is, just for the uh, sake of simplicity. And we'll add our content over here. No, not up, down. So this is where we add our content. Um, this is probably not, not a reasonable place to do it for now, but just to get things going. Class equals this. Enter the message here. All the closing stuff can be removed. We don't need the main content anymore. We just yield the stuff in here. Okay. And these have to be... No, this is... No, this can't be used because this is Urbex syntax. We have to change it to the slim syntax. And add the missing S. All right. So hopefully, reloading should provide us with a new um, new layout for the stuff. Yeah. Neat, isn't it? Um, all right. So this is just stolen. Uh, all right, the JavaScript isn't working because we didn't include the JavaScript of the um, of of, Bloop, of Bootstrap, but the um, the pr the principal uh, things are there. All right, so this text center we can just remove it, and this py five can be removed too. Okay, so we want to add the JavaScript. We forgot that. Um, application JS, and we always, uh, for now, we just um, add everything. We don't look we, we, that we, we probably. If if you want to be really careful, you you just load the stuff you actually need. So if you don't use models, you don't have to include the code for the models. But uh, we won't do that today because it's really just um, you just introduce everything, so we won't have to bother with it. Um, so this is really just Bootstrap, if I remember correctly. Right, 
reloading. Takes some time because again the JavaScript has to be. Oh yeah, so this didn't work out. Error, module not found, can't. Oh yeah, can't resolve popper core. Popper is a JavaScript dependency that um, that Bootstrap has. So we just say yarn add popper.js slash, slash uh, core. You could find this information in um, on, on npm.js. Right. It's now the server again. Reload, then everything's recompiling again. All right, and everything worked. So now, hopefully, yeah. So JavaScript there. So we have a full, uh, we have fully integrated the, all the Bootstrap stuff, stuff, so we can start using it. Um, and we should probably uh, just make the index page of the calculations a little, little bit neater. Table dot table. Looks like a table then. Um, and all the all these links. Our button first is primary, second is secondary, third is danger. Yeah, it's too fast again. Whoops. Um, Maybe you can show where you find yeah. the examples. Uh, yeah. Uh, um, bootstrap. For these classes. Yes, I will. I will show. Um, and we have to get rid of this. We just and we don't want this. Um, yeah, well, we don't don't use both of them. We can just add it here. Okay, so everything's big and neat and full screen now. Um, so all this, uh, all these uh, contextual classes I used uh, come. They all all come from. Oh, they come from Bootstrap. Um, and uh, for example, this is components um, buttons, and you will find all kinds of of, the, of, of, of button information, whatever you, you want there. Um, so these these are the, the the color things. You can find things about si sizing, so you can make buttons larger or smaller. All this stuff is just really just just there at your fingertips. So ev for everyone who hasn't done uh, an awful lot of, of CSS so far, this really, really saves your life because uh, writing custom CSS that is really well supported on both mobile and desktop and all browsers and all this stuff, this is, is really a major annoyance. So I very much suggest using some kind of framework we use Bootstrap. You could use Serp Foundation, but I guess Bootstrap really won the battle for now, for now at least. Uh, so I'd stick to that because it's the best. It is extremely well supported, and um, you find a lot of hints on Stack Overflow and whatever. So you can just yeah, I, I'd really suggest using this. And there are uh, uh, if you want some some custom made templates, you can find uh, we had this in the beginning here. These themes thing you could for like 50 euros you can buy really almost all designs you can imagine that are based on um, on, on bootstrap and this is really just it's so easy to just use this so yeah instead of writing custom CSS and um, one thing um, that we did now you see these buttons are just really really too big so you should make them smaller um, and we saw this sizes section so you can Tell a button to be BTN SM or small. Um, go to the index action. Ah. And make them small. And uh, even, for example, adding, making them a button group. So that looks like just one button that it's split in parts so yeah pretty neat to just get things up and running uh, and have them look well somehow like you desire them to um so this new calculation should of course be a button too 
For these link to helpers, you could use um, the class option, btn, btn minus oh, whatever success. All right, new calculation. Well, this form is incredibly ugly. Um, and I, well, I hope most of you already made such a form for themselves, but um, at least you could remember from last week um, that we had this uh, form uh, partial, and we used the uh, the form helpers of uh, of Rails that at least take care of linking the labels correctly with the with the input fields and stuff like that, and do some naming. Um, but this is still still a little bit cumbersome. So we could just just to, to see how things are done in, uh, in Bootstrap. So this is a form group. And uh, this is a form label. And this is a form control. So now the first one should look at least somehow reason, somewhat reasonable. Um, but still, this is not what we want. What we want is, we want to, we want Rails to take care of all this stupid stuff. We don't want to repeat this all over again. There is one neat um, library that is called uh, Simple Form. Simple Form. Um, and the idea of Simple Form is that you really just write what you, precisely what you need. So when you want to use it. You have forms like this, simple form for whatever, which is very much what we already had here, form for, simple form for, and then really just input, username, input password, input submit. Um, so this is what we want to use here too. So we have to install simple form. This is pretty simple. Uh, first we have to add it to our gem file, which is uh, a place where we just state which kind of li or which libraries we need. So, Gem file. I just added some random place, and I even omit the version for now. Um, yeah. Then of course, bundle install to um, install the uh, the missing code. So now it installed simple form 5.1, which obviously I'm not using so far. Um, and we then have a look. Run the generator, Rails generate simple form install. We'll, we will see what this actually does. Um, but we. It's raining like insane outside. Crazy. So, yeah. so if you see us drowning, then the rain went, was too bad. Um, so we just paste this here and call this generator. So every gem may or may not bring its own generators, and especially some of them have generators to produce certain code. Um, and here you see we have in, in config initializers, we have a simple form and simple form bootstrap. Um, and uh, we have a, a, a scaffold. A, uh, this is for automatically generating code. We don't use that currently, but um, at least we have these two initializers. So let's have a brief look at them. Um, so this is config initializers, simple form. And here you find lots of options. So you declare how the um, actual form is, is how the, the wrapping of the inputs and the labels and all this kind of stuff, how this is supposed to look like and how the um, so if you want the label first, uh, input la uh, then, or other way around, and things they have beside another or whatever, um, this can all be conf configured here. We don't go there into any detail. Um, and these are the overrides for, the, um, for Bootstrap. So when this is loaded and all the files in, in config initializers are loaded at boot time of the application, then um, the... Um, all the form controls should look uh, as desired. So, 
We added simple form. We, we added the initializer. So just let's use it. So it's simple form for calculation. And we can omit almost everything. We just have input. Oh, f dot input. Argument one. Operand. Argument two. Uh, and f dot submit. So we can really just comment all this out. All right, so after restarting the server, installing, um, installing gems requires a restart of the server always. Okay, so let's have a look. All right, so well, this looks somewhat neat, I guess. Um, and if we want to change the, the submit button, we could probably add a, a class here like btn primary, whatever. Ah, and btn anyway. Okay, so, um, and uh, for the operand, we currently have, a, have an input field. We had already we changed this to a, to a select field in the uh, in last week, so we already had this select um, and we can do the same here. We can just tell it that it won't want to take from collection, namely this one. This may or may not work. I'm not totally sure. No, it doesn't. We have to expl explicitly tell a uh, simple form that we want to use a select. Oops, select. So why doesn't this work? Oh, it does. Okay, so yeah. Now we can choose this from uh, from the list and to make everything a little bit more, more like, yeah, you expect it to, to look for a for an calculation. You say this is a row and this is called SM5, call SM2, SM5. You don't need to then yeah. select. Yeah, probably not. Um, reloading, everything's put besides each other. Um, for those that are not familiar with um, with Bootstrap, uh, Bootstrap uses by default a 12 column grid. And I now specified here that I want to put everything that comes in, into a row. And the first uh, line, so this, this line is supposed to be a column that is five wide, then a two wide column for the, for the operand, and another five, five wide column for the, for the second argument. Um, and we could also uh, yeah, just use four here, four there, and two here, and put the button into the same line. All right, so now we have some trouble with alignment because, uh, yeah, we have these uh, these labels up here, and uh, this is missing. So, to we could just add a form label with no content. Oh. So why is this being escaped and break? Oh, MBSP. So this is the reason. All right. Well, this is almost correct. Um, form group form control. Yeah. Uh, well. All right. So we, we we could we could go into this, but I, I really I really I really don't want to. But uh, yeah. So this is mainly the wrapping that is produced by the um, uh, by the um, simple form things. So you see, for every just for this line uh, input argument two, what we get is 
a wrapper form group, then a label integer required for whatever with the content, and uh, the corresponding in input class with uh, all the all the attributes uh, set in a way that everything just works. We'll for now ignore the trouble with the um, uh, with the misaligned button. I really don't want to spend too much time on that. Um, and as, as you already see, uh, this is um, responsive. So when it became smaller, everything snapped. And uh, yeah, this. And you could also um, add other uh, classes here to have specific behavior at certain monitor widths. So depending on uh, how large your display is, the form may look slightly different. And you even have uh, the opportunity to completely uh, make certain elements completely uh, invisible. So for example, if you have for, for mobile phones, you, you omit certain um, descriptions of things like this. Well, this is, this is all just standard bootstrap stuff. Not, not has nothing to do with Rails. Um, yeah. So we add another calculation here. And as you see, uh, it, this still just worked. Uh, we didn't change anything about the logic here. It's really just about presentation. The, the um, important part, I don't know, again, I don't know how um, familiar you are with um, with HTML, so I'll probably explain this a little bit at least. Um, the uh, for an input field, then the the way the data is trans trans transmitted is the uh, or the how, how the, the parameter is named is uh, determined by this name attribute. So this uh, in 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 Rails this becomes uh, a calculation hash and argument one being the um, the key to access this. Uh, the value of this input field. And all this um, is just handled by, by simple form. So again, you don't have to use things like this, but it really makes life so much easier that I really suggest sticking to this. And especially you get these um, required fields and everything is really just set up. So you don't have to, to, to manually uh, handle these, the, all this formula, form stuff yourself because it's yeah, just, I consider it pretty annoying. Uh, especially for for huge projects, um, of course, if when you have certain um, fancy forms that are not just crud stuff, but that are yeah really interesting in some way, then you can always uh, style the forms the way you want to. But especially when you're running into mainly crud stuff, and then using simple form is just a very efficient way to get things up and running. Um, yeah, all right. <clears throat> so close this again. Um, and uh, so, yeah, there's no abort button here, anyway. Okay, um, so one thing I want to show you to you now is uh, when you're developing an application, you normally start with, for example, for this calculation uh, module, mo uh, model, you start with the, the the attributes you think of at first, and then you find, all right, we, we are still missing something. So we need, for, for all calculations, we need to have a name, whatever that is, but we just decide we need a name here. Um, and to do this, um, we had to have to add a migration. Um, you could look this up in the, uh, in the, um, in the Rails guides, but uh, I did this already. So Rails generate, Migration. Oh, <laughs> thank you, set as age. Um, so we want to generate a migration. We we name it add name to calculations, and we want to add. Oh well, we don't want to. We should then call the migration title to calculations, and title is supposed to be a string. So when we when we do this, active, there's a file being created in the migrations folder. So we go there and have a look. Maybe migrate. And then we have this add title to calculations file, which inherits from active record migration. Um, and this has a change uh, method, which says add column. And add column takes uh, three arguments. First, the name of the table, 
the name of the of the column and the type of the column. So in this case, we want to add a title attribute to the calculations table. All right. Uh, we could, of course, add five other uh, add column things here and also create indices or whatever. But for now, let's really just add this name. All right, so break db migrate. Uh, ah, and it's Rails today. It was changed like five years ago or so. I really don't, <laughs> still don't get used to it. Okay, so the migration run. Mm. Sorry. Um, and now, if we open the console and we take a calculation, for example, last, which will give us the last ca calculation, then we see it has a title attribute, attribute, which obviously is null because, well, yeah, we didn't specify a title yet. Um, and we can now add the title to the form. For example, this is full width. Um, and then we should also add it to the uh, to the table. Right, so, ah, and starting the server might help here. So, we added the, the, the title column for the table. Uh, right, so the title is empty, obviously. And if we edit this, we could specify a title. This will result in an error. Not, oh, well, yeah, haha. <laughs> Um, was a silent error, unpermitted parameter per title, so the title was not set. But this is, a, a, this is really a major configuration annoyance about the new Rails project. Um, writing that uh, it won't accept this title parameter here is, is fine, but you just don't get any, get any proper feedback. Um, but there is the possibility to just go to the config. Uh, where is it? No, not initializers. Application RB. Oh, yeah. Um, I have to look this up because I just can't remember. Um, Rails raise um, param. Yeah, raise on unfiltered parameters. This is. So we just uh, we, and we want this to happen in the um, in the development environment. Raise and delivery errors. Let's just check with us. No, this is not part here. Yeah, we could just uh, add this at the at the end of the configuration file. So config. Raise and unfiltered parameters equals to true. Although I'm not sure whether this is the right config parameter, we'll see. Try this again. Yeah, we have to, yes, of course, we have to restart the server because it changed the configuration. Thank you. Oh, yeah, it's called slightly different. Let's see, question or so this is yeah the question is, is stupid. We just need to um raise an unpermitted parameters.
Yeah, so this is what we want. So we want to change the configuration of the action controller, which is the controller, so this is the base controller, and this is responsible for handling the, um, the parameters, and we want to raise when an uh, unpermitted parameter uh, is encountered. So this is what we want. This, of course, is stuff that you don't change a lot, so I don't know this by heart. All right, so now it raised because it found an unpermitted parameter. You probably remember that we had in the, um, in the calculations controller, um, we had this calculation parameters, and we need to explicitly allow title to be mass assigned. So, reloading here. And it should be there, but we have to change the show action to just... Um, so let's make this an H3. And the H1 is the calculation.title. All right, so. Well, the title is being saved, and when we are going to the, to the list, the title is being saved. Not, nothing, nothing too interesting here, but the important part is that if you want to add uh, more parameters or more, more uh, attributes to your, to your module, models, um, you can use these generators to generate the migration and to then, uh, you, you, that you can then just use it because you don't have to declare it somewhere, but you have to tell the uh, controllers if you want to mass assign it, uh, that this is a, uh, an allowed parameter too. This is just, yeah, uh, for um, when, you're, you, when you're working on an application that has, that has a certain stability status. So when you're really just starting up, you could just drop the database and restart. So drop the database, change your, your definitions and restart, um, which is in the beginning better because you don't have gazillions of uh, migrations there. Although this is yeah, a matter of taste, I guess. All right. Okay. So what we now have, we want have, uh, we, we now have one mod model. So we really have this calculation model and nothing else. But normally you have, uh, yeah, relations between objects, and we want to see how we, we now want to see how to implement these these relations because this is an important uh, thing, and this is something where else is really really neat at. So what we want to do is we want to add um, uh, categories, which are just consist just, just of a name, and we want, we want to be able to um, add an, uh, a calculation to a category, and we want to be able to look at a category and see all the calculations that are, belong to this category. This is really just to play around with it. Um, so we say rails generate. Migration, create, not calculation, but category. Okay, so again, there was a, a migration file created. Um, so create categories. Uh, Rails knows how to deal with singular and plural with, for, for most English words. They have a database, so it knows how to pluralize category, to singularize categories. Um, and this is really just string uh, title. Category is pretty stupid, really just a title. Um, okay, <clears throat> so we run our migrate script. Um, but, oh yeah, let's stick to this first. Okay, so now what we need to do, we need to uh, be able to create these categories. So, we say we have another resources block here, categories. Um, this creates all these CRUD actions, yeah? So you have the, the, sh uh, the show index and whatsoever. Um, and uh, we add another controller, 
this is the categories categories controller rb um, and for the sake of simplicity we just take this and do some search and replace Category uh, and no category already, so calcul calculation. So this is pretty much the same things we did last last week, and and there are ways to simplify this because this is really just code application. Um, I'll just reduce this. This is something we didn't, yeah, we didn't really have a closer look at. Uh, edit category find blah blah successfully boom 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 boom. Redirect to calculation path, so we have to change this again. So every occurrence of calculation should be category here. All right, and categories. And there is only one, one permitted attribute, which is title. Okay, so we created a categories controller. Um, and we then have to add the corresponding view. For, oh, first we need a folder again. Categories, new file index html slim h1 categories tab table this uh, table class is necessary for it look uh, for the table to look like a bootstrap table um, oh we could we could we could use some other um, Some, some other bootstrap element here just to have to just just to see it if categories uh, present that is if there are any categories to show otherwise alert alert danger no categories um, and if there are some we just render our table Oh no, I didn't want to use a table. I want to use a list group, which is another element that you find in the bootstrap documentation. And categories each do category. And then have it uh, have a link to um, oh no, no, no link. List group item. For now, we really just show the title, and so far we, we didn't produce a, a, a model file. We have to, to add this quickly. New file, class, category, inherits from application record. Application record, probably capitalize the R. Um, this is a Ruby file and it uh, validates the title and uh, presence, true and uh, uniqueness. True. So you can't save. Um, Categories two you can't have two categories having the same title. Um, all right, and they, and they all need to have a title anyway. All right, so if we restart the server, 
and go to the slash categories. Hmm. All right, so there was some categories controller to find constant categories controller, but didn't. Yeah, so I made some errors when, oh yeah, categories. This was when we searched and replaced. I didn't see this. All right, reloading, no categories. So this is the alert thing from, from Bootstrap. Um, and as before, we add a button. BTN success, BTN success. And this is supposed to link to a new category path. And the content of the button should be add category. Burp. New category. Ah, oh yeah. Path. All right. So again, we have this neat button, and we have no template for new so far, which, yeah, we didn't create. So again, we save a new HTML slim. New category, render form as above. Um, let's just have a look at the old new file we already had. Yeah, it's just this. I want to stick to the same uh, same stuff that we don't. Uh, yeah, that things are as uniform as possible. All right, and then we have to create this form. Uh, underscore form HTML oops HTML slim and what we have is a simple form for a category and this is just one entry uh, f dot input title and f dot submit So we can now create categories. Um, I don't care about spacing and all this kind of stuff. There are ways to make things look much better, but for now it's really just, I just want to get things up and running. So let's create a category. So where does this come from? Anyway, let's create the category snacks. Oh, and the categories controller show is missing a template. So there is no show. Uh, view so far, we have to create this, save, show, html slim, h1 equals um, category, um, title, and yeah, that's it for now, okay, so we it was successfully created, and we can see the category number one, and on the categories um, page, we now have this, uh, this is not a tail, this is a list group. So if we add another, we'll still see, we'll see the difference. Uh, yeah, we should add the link here. Um, categories. Yeah. Path. All right, so this is just the this link link group um, element, um, and we want to add a show and a edit button here. And I f forgot how to do this properly, so we can just have a look at the Bootstrap documentation list group with badges, checkboxes, radios, JavaScript behavior. So we can do it like this, or we could uh, I'd probably do it in a, a slightly more straightforward way, which is not as neat, but a um, little, little less uh, markup. Um, 
put this in a span and add a, a float end um, edit category categories path of category um, and again btn btn primary we should now edit, no edit category path obviously because this, this is about one category not about all of them all right so we have this button and we, if we should if we add some content to the button it can even be seen I can make it small again all right <clears throat> and uh, then we need a show view yeah and some spacing All right. Um, so, um, but what we, what we actually really wanted to do is we wanted to link the categories and the calculations. So this was really just setting up the stuff to, to be able to, to edit or to create these categories. But what we, what we really want is we want to go to the calculations. <clears throat> and when we edit one, we want to be able to choose to which category this should belong. So, um, to do this in, in, in SQL, you, we have to use uh, we have to add a, a foreign key. So every uh, every calculation has a foreign key that links it to its category. So Rails generate migration again, uh, add um, category ID. To not calcul uh, calculations and category ID. I think this can be done like this. Refer is this right? Remember reference. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Thank you. Um, Okay, so when we now take a look at the um, generated file, yeah, we see calcul, calcul. Yeah, so I mistyped, uh, but that doesn't really make a difference. We can just change it here. Um, so we add to the calculations table a category ID column, which is of type reference. Um, this doesn't yet produce things like foreign key constraints. So uh, we can add things like foreign key constraints and all this stuff, um, but we will just skip this now for uh, simplicity. Have you any objections? Uh, I thought there was a trick for the reference. Uh, just yeah, we'll, we'll see. Um, so it, it looks like at least the uh, field was added. And what we now do, oh, so we, again, we can just open the console and have a look at the la latest calculation. And this now has a category ID attribute, which uh, has a nil value. So it doesn't, it is not linked with a, with a category so far. Um, so, and now the actual fun starts. A calculation belongs to a category and each category has many calculations. So we just declarate this here and we restart the console um, and we again 
take the last calculation, we could just ask it calc dot category. Okay, it's obviously empty because yeah, it, it wasn't assigned. Um, if we take the last category. and ask for the calculations, you see the generated SQL statement, select calculations from calculations, where category ID is verb ID2. So this is a, a um, prepared statement, therefore it looks that, uh, ugly, but <clears throat> it will just search for all calculations that have the matching category ID. As long as you stick, so in, 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 in Rails, the, um, there are uh, the, 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 the Rails framework itself is pretty opinionated about uh, naming columns. So when you have a foreign key that references another table, it's supposed to be called the singular, singularized table name ID. So in this case, category ID. Um, and if, if you stick to that, you don't have to do anything else than just write these has, um, belongs to and has many things. Um, so if we start the, the server again and go to the calculation forum, this is the place where we want to add the um, when, when we when we edit or create a new calculation, we want to be able to specify which um, uh, category it belongs to. We should probably just put this beside the beside the title. Let's make the title 8 width wide and uh, all right. F dot association category. So in this case, we, d we don't explicitly, explicitly uh, request an input. What we say, this is we want to edit the association, the category association of the calculation object. Um, and reloading, we'll get. The select box, again, when we save, we run into an error because we have this unpermitted parameter category ID. So it behaves as it should. This is to um, prevent people from adding, for example, when they are adding, they, when you have a social network, you're editing your own user, um, you can't just add uh, a, uh, is admin parameter to become an admin. So this is why we, this is so strict about the uh, which parameters are allowed to be um, to be mass assigned? Um, calculations, con so calculations controller and category ID. Can just reload. Which okay. So at least it showed up. Um, and we could now go back to the. Categories. Do we remember? Oh, yeah, we can just, yeah. Um, let's go to the index here. And we could add the number of, um, the number of calculations in each category. So this is a badge. For example, we could use any other element. Um, BG slash secondary, just to make things as colorful as possible. Um, and category dot um, calculations size. Reload, bam. All right. So obviously in snacks there is one. And in dogs, there is no um, calculation. If we go on the show action, now here we want to link and to, we want to see and link the um, the category, uh, the, the calculations. So we go to the um, show action and uh, say, yeah, again, if category. Category dot calculations um, 
Ah, we can just do it like this for now. Present. Then we make some kind of list. Otherwise, alert. Alert danger. No calculations here. Um, and here we make, we could, for example, again, use a, a list group. Um, yeah, that'll take, oops. Each do calculation. A dot list group item and then we should yeah we, we yeah we could probably just take type the title of the calculation yeah uh, and it hasn't yet linked to something reasonable but we could just say if we link it to the calculation path of calculation. So, whoops. Uh -huh. Okay, so we went to the correct calculation and we could, on the other hand, of course, go to the, on the, on the calculations page, on the show action of the calculation, we could um, add a link to the um, So if the calculation has uh, a category, then we put a link here, a href equals um, category path of calculation category. And uh, for example, some neat arrow and uh, all right, so now we see this is this belongs to snacks, and we can jump between the two. This is pretty simple <clears throat> um as you see apart from the controller where we where really duplicating code this is uh, uh, this is the case apart from that we are really just well writing what we actually have to so there's really not much boilerplate stuff so in the um, in the category itself we only say we have many calculations this automatically creates a couple of accessors so we can this this line makes Every category having uh, um, functions like calculations, calculations equals, calculations append, um, create calculation, and whatever. So we can. Um, so this this produces a lot of methods or injects a lot of methods into the into, into all the category objects, um, and in fact, has many is really just another method. So in fact has many is just a method of the class category that is uh, or of the of, of the application record um, that is executed when this file is loaded so all these macros also the same is true about validates all these macros or all these declaration things you see here are really just function calls um, this feels a little awkward in the beginning but um, it means that it's, it's incredibly easy to add declarations, declarations like that for yourself. So it's very, very easy to just... So if you, if you go to application record and say def self dot who, um, so don't do anything reasonable, put... Uh, And we'll just inspect. If we do things like this, we could just go to calculation and write down hoo hoo here. Um, and when the 
system is coming up. All right, there it is. Let's do the go to the console uh, calculation. Hello, calculation. So, as you see, these things look pretty much like being magic, but in fact they are really just stupid function calls. Um, that of course are doing a lot of magic stuff. They are producing code. They are really introducing new methods to the to the to the class. But um, from a from from the language perspective, it is really really just function calls. And one of the things that's really great about Rails, I think, is the way they crafted the um, the, uh, the their base classes so that you can use them as an as a, as a DSL. There are quite a lot of a lot of um, of Ruby programmers that really don't know what they are actually doing there. They are really just using um, uh, using this this stuff, and they don't understand the the the, the magic and the meta programming that's act, uh, that's happening behind the scenes. But I think for an uh, for a computer scientist, this is uh, yeah, you should be interested in this. Um, and we will probably or hopefully go into this um, meta programming stuff in a later uh, in a later uh, lecture. Because this is something I yeah I, I really love. Um, you probably realized that already. Okay, we'll remove this here because it's not of any use. Um, by the way, um, you saw here that um, in development, Rails doesn't load all the all the all the classes. It lo it loads them on on demand. So we had a an, uh, an error from Zeitwerk. Uh, and some time ago that showed up when um, the, the, there was a class it couldn't find. So there, it has some, some magic to really load the stuff it needs in development. In production mode, everything is loaded at, 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 at boot time and everything is available at your fingertips immediately. But in development, everything is loaded on demand and especially everything is reloaded when reloading the page. So although this is the, uh, the application is running, it's always the same application, um, it realized, okay, this file has changed and I have to reload everything and I have to, to replace the classes that I have in, the, um, in, my, in my object tree and delete the old one and replace it with a new one. All right, so now we have... Um, yeah, we have a couple of, of, of um, calculations and we have a couple of categories. Um, I wanted to show to you um, how to query all these things. Um, but to be able to do this, we should add some more models. And for this sake, I just introduced the seeds to you. So the seeds files are there to um, yeah, produce data that you can play with. They are generally not supposed to contain the actual data that you want to work with, but it's really in development a uh, possibility to quickly um, populate the database with something to have a look at. Um, so what we do here is um, we take the array, um, things, stuff, and uh, more things, and uh, oh no, it's probably not. No, this is not. not this is not clever. Um, we create. Uh, so create is directly creating the object in the database. Um, a category with a title. Neat. Calculations, um, and we want to make sure. So either it is created or an other other error is raised. Raised, yeah. Um, raised. Um, so this is why we use the bang. And we have funny calculations, and we have nifty calculations. Um, so this creates three categories, um, 
and then for a hundred times so we don't need the so we could we could get the the actual number so we could get uh, zero one two or three but we don't need it so we just om omit this parameter here we create um, calculation create and we have argument one this is a random number between zero and one hundred so in this case I really like to indent like this argument two the same and operand oh come on this calculation it's a call operands dot sample sample just takes in uh, a random element from the from the array uh, so ra random uh, in in the sense of is it is really supposed to be random it is not not uh, in in, in uh, in Objective C, there was a, was a similar similar function that really said it took a random element, but it may just meant I, I, we don't guarantee it to be the same every time. So in this case, this is supposed to be some um, pseudo random uh, element. All right. So okay, and we of course want to add a category. Category. C1, C2, C3, dot sample. So, one of the, add, add them to one of the categories, or probably we should just also allow um, nil. So, um, certain um, calculations don't belong to any categories, which is fine too. Okay, so we could just take this code and paste it at the command line in the Rails console, of course. Um, but uh, there is a, uh, uh, is a task here which is called rails db seed. All right, so we don't we didn't write anything, so we had no output. And we go to the console again. All right, let's first go to the server and let's have a look at the available categories. So now we have neat, funny and nifty calculations with uh, certain uh, entries. And oh yeah, well, we, we forgot the title. This is, this is bad. Um, so we don't have proper titles here. Um, what we could do, we could just say a calculation def um, we call it backend title, or no front end more. Uh, anyway, uh, so this title is either the title, if if there is one. Otherwise, it is just argument one operand argument two. Um, and this we use in the show view of the categories. This is in the front end title. All right. So now we have the uh, because they all have no um, have no proper title. Um, and if we give a proper title here. Uh, We should see it here. Yeah. So it's just we just added a method that is either using some um, some calculated title or uh, the the title that was given at creation time. Okay. So we have these uh, all these neat calculations. <clears throat> um, but what I wanted to show to you is how querying is done. So it's you normally don't iterate about uh, over all elements of, but you normally say, okay, I need to find certain elements, and I have to, I need some subsets. Mm. So 
So, first we have this find thing. This is really just using uh, the ID. So, if we say calculation.find with a number, we just find the element with the ID, or if it is not, if we don't find it, we get a uh, record not found exception. Um, next thing is, oh, this is the, oops. What you frequently do, you want to have all those where the, where the second argument is five or something like that. Um, then you, so, uh, well, find gives you one element, precisely one element or an error. Um, but if you say, I want to have all the, uh, I want to have all the calculations let's say where operand is plus um, then you use where and you have this um, hash syntax to specify what you want and what you, what you get here you set, set, get select calculation where calculation operand equals to plus um, and obviously if I say minus you'll get all the minus calculations um, and you could also do things like this if you want all the plus and minus operations then you'll get some select blah 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 where operand in a list so it uses the um, reasonable uh, um, SQL syntax depending on um, on the, the, the database used, the, the uh, SQL is different, of course. So certain databases don't properly support third certain uh, operators. So yeah, this is, uh, depends on whether you're using SQLite, Postgres, MySQL, or whatever. Um, and uh, another thing you could you might want to do is you want, might want to say I want to have all the those where uh, where, where argument one is less than seven. Um, this can be done like that. So you have to, to, to specify the, um, the, the query string um, and uh, the seven is then um, escaped properly. So if you do this um, good old drop Table students here. It is um, it is escaped, and if you do things like that, it is also escaped. So you can be you can be pretty sure that when you are writing um, conditions like uh, using this question mark syntax. That the um, you can uh, re rely on the on the framework to to take care of the escaping of the uh, of the input. So you can put um, you you can enter user input there, which you you could of course also say things like uh, argument is less than seven, just giving a string. This is possible, but um, using it like that. And user input here is, well, it is, it is syntactically possible. Uh, oh, yeah, actually, I need double quotes for this to work. Um, this is syntactically possible, but this is just insane. Because, um, yeah, you might run into bobby tables and uh, all your data is gone. Or probably people get to see data they are not supposed to see. So this is really important. Stick to this question mark syntax here. And... Um, uh, if you have different uh, or multiple uh, inputs there, you could do things like this. Uh, oops, two. Yeah. So there are certain certain ways to to uh, to put the the, the where statements. Um, one thing that's incredibly neat, I guess, is that what comes back from these um, from these where statements. Is not an array. 
but it is uh, an active record relation object. And these active record relation objects are, well, on, on the command line, they are immediately evaluated to, to show you something. But uh, in principle, if you say just, just say class here, it, you see there was no, um, uh, no SQL statement fired to the database. Um, so it's, it's really just, just in, uh, yeah, something else here. So C is an active record relation. And if I ask C how many elements it contains, you see it says select count from calculations where argument 1 is, slow, uh, is less than 5. It is not um, getting all the elements and looking how many of them are there, but it's, it's really just doing this count thing. Um, and you could also do things like uh, see where operator so C2 um, again is an active record relation class uh, active, record, uh, active record relation object um, and no calculations took place so it's, it's really just you're, you're uh, really just defining the relation you want to have a look at. And you can refine it without actually executing it. it and as long as you don't access the elements of the, um, of the result set, you uh, don't touch the database. So, um, as I said, on the command line, when it tries to inspect these things, it is always yeah, getting to the database and have a, have a look what actually comes back there. But um, when you're using this in a controller or something, it is really just um, you're really just defining these these active record relations, and the um, the uh, the database access only takes place when necessary. And for example, if I say c2 dot first, oper operator, okay. What did I do wrong there? Is it not operator? Operand. Operand. Uh -huh. Okay, so this is this is bad. All right. So uh, if I now ask it to give me the first of these, then it will not get all of them, but it really gets limit one. So it will only access what it needs to access. Um, in this case, this is bad because there, is no, there are no entries. So, uh, so let's, let's say less than 50. And plus again. So C2 dot... So if uh, and there are uh, um, oh yeah let's first say first it will uh, load only one if I say count it will only have a look at how many are there um, and I could also say for example limit three in this case when I'm sending this often of here in the command line I will it will actually get the first three. Um, I could say things like order by argument one in scanning order. Um, this is at first not being evaluated, but really just stored. Really just it's, it's really just a new object. And I say limit one. I should get the the element of C two that has the um, least argument one. In this case, this is eight. However, yeah, it doesn't really doesn't really matter, but um, it's really important to 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 know that these um, these active record relation objects first are not accessing the database directly, but they are really only accessing the database when they need to, and um, 
There are, so let's take a look at C2 again. So if I, um, if I say C2.count, yeah, oops, it will always I access the database. If I say C2.size, um, I don't understand why this happens. It may have something to do with um, command line nonsense. Um, generally, in um, so okay, what you what you see here is that ah okay no, so C two wasn't loaded here. So to get the size, it had to look up how many elements are there. Once it is loaded. Um, and to get the length, this is just a uh, function or a uh, method of, of, of array. Um, so it, to get the length, it has to load the data and take a look at the array. So now everything is loaded, and so size should now not access the database. Yeah, luckily. Um, so there, um, you may need to have a look at which function is the right one for you to use under, uh, under certain circumstances. So um, Certain functions always access the database, certain functions try to avoid it, um, and choosing the right one may, may be tricky every, every now and then, but this can save a lot of, uh, lot of trouble. Because you, um, yeah, you, you may prevent unnecessary database calls, which is only important for really huge database sets, of course, but yeah, this is what you run into when you're doing proper things anyway. All right. This this is what I wanted to uh, to say about the um, uh, about the um, the querying. So I probably sum up some. Um, so find just gets the one with a given ID. Um, oh, so let's go to the calculation. Another th uh, this is this gets um, one element. Find by, um, for example, argument one. Four gets one element two, the first one it finds. Um, with where. Um, Again, argument oh, it was like this, I think. Gets an uh, result set that is, not, as I said, that is not necessarily uh, being executed. So it's in fact, it's, it's only the um, what you get back is, is the, the relation object. And um, you then have things like order, ID, ask, or things like this. You have things like limit. You have things like um, offset. In conjunction with limit, you can use this to, to do make pagination. Um, you have things like group. Um, what's the, what's the other, which others are important? Well, I think well, you can, of course, always have a look at the um, uh, the Rails guides um, active record uh, page. They're, they go into deeper uh, into deeper detail there. But you, with these uh, functions, in a, you can you can use them in a, in a chained way um, to get the the result set to the size you actually need to. Uh, you actually need it. So you don't have to specify everything at once, but you can uh, incrementally add more conditions and more, um, more operands to the, to the, to the SQL uh, statement that is executed once you need it. All right. Um, I think this is mainly what I wanted to say today. Do you remember anything I forgot? No. I think that's what was it. 
All right. So, are there any immediate questions? There was a question about UUIDs, which was answered in oh, yeah. as well. All right. So, yeah. <laughs> Well, this this um, uh, UUID stuff, we use this in one of our uh, applications and it works quite well. The only disadvantage is that uh, it's so much easier to talk about uh, number 14 or even 4212 than oof. Um, so uh, there are... <laughs> what the heck are you doing to these birds? <laughs> There are good reasons to use UUIDs, of course, um, but whenever you don't have a, a, re a reason to use them, I'd prefer not to. Um, but this is really just a personal thing. You, but you can use uh, UUIDs. And uh, you can also th do things like uh, when you're using um, vintage data from, from, from old systems that already exist, um, you can change everything. You can specify which column is to be supposed to be the primary key. You can even have co compound primary keys. Um, but then you have to do, uh, you have to specify these things. Uh, oops, what did I do, did I do now? Um, so, if for example, the, 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 the table name is different. You can do things like self dot table name equals to whatever. Um, and the same way you can, you can specify the primary key and all kind of stuff. But in general, as long as you stick to the standards that uh, the Rails guys defined, um, well, everything feels pretty magic. And um, I must say that I didn't really find a lot of, of, of things where I have the impression that the, the, standard, um, the standards they defined are, are, pre, are poor. So I, I generally like, like them. Although, yeah, I'm maybe a little bit biased already. <laughs> so, no further questions? Not then... So... Um, huh? Ah, it's only on this monitor. Uh, just look here on our, we have here four monitors in front <laughs> of us, so I got a bit confused about one of the uh, previous screens for the, uh, whatever. Um, yeah, uh, for the homework for this week, um, we choose to start uh, this week, uh, yeah, the main project of this semester um, which is uh, that you all implement your own social network if you don't know what a social network is um, is there myspace <laughs> <laughs> maybe this is a label this is so neat uh, uh, is this myspace yeah no. You have to agree. You should definitely agree. This is MySpace. But you have to, to read and understand MySpace. Okay. Yeah, I agree. Um, <laughs> yeah. So, for example, is this really MySpace? Yeah, yeah. They, they, thought, they, they did an update. Okay. I like four years ago. MySpace is offline. Okay. Yeah. For example, default set is offline. True default set is offline. I okay. guess. <laughs> okay. Uh, maybe you know Facebook. Uh, not, uh, I don't want to show my Facebook. <laughs> <laughs> or Tinder. Uh, yeah, or whatever. <laughs> or, uh, Twitter. Uh, whatever. So each, each and every one of you is supposed to kill all of them uh, by the end of the semester. Yeah, okay. Shouldn't yeah, be that hard. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, yeah. Everybody should implement his or, his or her own um, social network. So uh, in this week, the first task for you, uh, so, sorry, the second after creating the repository for the project is to choose a proper name for the network. This so, is 50% uh, of, the, of the points. Yes, of course. So find your, uh, well, how else? should call my net, um, social network uh, 
Uh, my network is Cookie Friends. <laughs> or something like that. Yeah. So it's um, ex accepting cookies is mandatory then. Yeah, okay. Um, um, yeah. Just choose the name, create a Rails project with the name of your social network. Um, what's, uh, yeah. It would be nice <laughs> if you follow these steps here. So you have said you push and commit uh, first to the master branch generated stuff so that in the assignment branch are only the changes you made your own because the generation of a project is not really uh, complicated thing. And that's very, that's a lot easier for us to keep track of your changes when uh, we are not uh, have to review boilerplate code. So, yeah, um, so it's a, it's a branch assignment three at bootstrap, simple form and slim as shown there this lecture and in the last lectures. Um, create and implement a post and a comment model. Yeah, I hope you know what a post is and what a comment is. So a post has a title, some text and that's it. Uh, maybe you find another field you want to add. And uh, a comment is a comment to a post. So like in some other social networks, may. So every post has yeah. many comments yeah. and every comment belongs to a post. Yeah. Um, implement all CRUD actions in views and controllers. Uh, for posts and comments, so you are able to create uh, posts, you are able to create comments to posts, and you are able to view posts and so on. Um, and that's it for this week. And then you just push and commit uh, the branch and create a pull request to the master branch. And we are reviewing this pull request. And for now, there is no need for um, things like user management and stuff like that. We'll go into this in the next weeks yeah. Uh, because yeah, this introduces a completely new level of, of abstraction. We, uh, and yeah, you will do that, but probably not now. Um, although, of course, if you feel like you want to, just <laughs> go ahead. But uh, yeah. We'll, we'll go and see different ways of doing it uh, next week, I guess. Stefan did already this uh, commit and uh, thing in the second assignment. Stefan, I'm pr proud of you. Um, <laughs> um, that's good. Um, uh, we, I mentioned this because uh, when I had a look at the first assignment, it was really annoying to scroll over uh, getting no files, idea from project files, and so on. Yeah, that's uh, really pain. So, yeah. Yeah, that's it. And again, if you feel like you have any questions, uh, yes. don't hesitate to ask them on, on Discord. Yeah, I um, we'll, we'll have a look there. wrong camera yeah you, you could um, for example in, in, in this direction if you uh, belongs to category um, or no, no, no let's go to the category uh, let's probably do what you what you want um, you can do things like this belongs to to well, <laughs> um, Main category or oh, parent parent. <laughs> what what's wrong with me? Parent category and uh, has ma many 
child categories. Uh, and in both cases, uh, class name category. Um, and then the foreign key for uh, um, belongs to parent category. Then they um, this is then use the foreign key parent category ID. And uh, we'd have to specify here that the foreign key, because it can't be guessed, Um, and we could even specify inverse of, of and inverse of here too. <clears throat> so if, if you do it like this and uh, add a column um, Um, parent category ID. Then uh, it would be possible to use it in exactly the same way as you said. This is necessary anyway because you may have things like a post has a creator, which is a user, and uh, visitors that are users, and um, editors that are users, and whatever you. So there, um, you can uh, name the uh, the relations the way you want to. And you can have multiple relations with this, between the same objects, um, or between the same classes, um, and even between the same objects. Uh, and then nothing gets gets mixed up there as long as you do naming. Yeah, so you keep track of your naming. Um, whether or not this is a clever way to implement this is another completely different question, <laughs> but uh, it can be done. Yes. Yeah. So this is this is the default behavior of um, of rates in many many places to really just uh, yeah guess from names uh, and check whether it can find things that match the names and then yeah hope for the best. Yeah, I'd naturally pref prefer um, uh, Unix file endings, but I don't know whether the um, uh, the Windows um, Ruby misbehaves in some way. Then, but I couldn't expect it. But maybe so. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And the, the file encoding should be Epsidic, please. <laughs> no. No. UTF-8. <laughs> this is important because otherwise we couldn't use emojis. And of course, you can... You can uh, this is... Uh, of course, you can... Uh, uh, do things like this. Why not? <laughs> and then you can... Uh, UTF-8 UTF for the win. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Why not? Yeah. Yeah. Well, although we should wait until tomorrow evening because uh, it just contains uh, the uh, last, last assignment. So, yes, I, I, I will probably do it on Saturday or...
Yeah, I'll send you that sheet. <coughs> So, that's it. it was this for this week. Thank you very much for your attention. Yeah. And uh, as I said, don't hesitate to ask if you have any questions. We try to answer. <laughs>